So today we'll make a first print from my trip uh, to Venice, Italy. Uh, it's a 35 millimeter film and I will also make the new chemistry for Array 4 development. Uh, so it's a bleach fix and the color developer. So let's go to the darkroom. So let's unpack the enlarger, put on my apron and just remember, film is not dead. So I will start to bring out the solutions to the proper degree, but because I'm already on 37 developments, I just want to prepare the new one because I will print the new photograph from my trip. And nevertheless, the chemistry is still okay. I just want to prepare new half liter solution. So for this one, I need a 50 milliliters of each solution. And because it's a part A and part B, I first added the part A of 50 milliliter inside the bottle with the already 400 milliliters of DI water. And it's exactly the same procedure for bleach fix. It's also two part solution and you need the 50 milliliters of each solution. I'm using plastic measurement cylinder. It's not really precise, but uh, the advantage in my conditions is actually it's not breakable. You cannot break it and you can easily store it in the same place where you store all the bottles and all the things what you're using in the dark room. And because the precision can only affect the time a little bit and the chemistry is actually crazy stable and the process itself is really reliable. So let's select the negative for today and I will print something which is not the view of Venice but the warm cozy place with the books what we found in Venice and on this picture I also want to test my new solutions and my old calibration if I need to make any corrections and changes. And because I developed film myself I'm not expecting any weird colors and color casts. And more or less all the pictures from this trip should be more or less easy to print because I'm confident with my exposures and also I control the whole process. And by the way we also have a scan and we can compare the scan of this picture to result what we have in a dark room. And for now let's remind ourselves how the atmosphere in the place looks like and what was the sound at this place and the atmosphere and the moods and what is the actually light conditions what we're dealing with. And in this case, digital representation, especially the video, it's a good idea to remind yourself the mood what you need to print. So I want to start with the printing on a larger format. This is why I exchanged the lens to 50 mm and let's focus on the grain and on the picture. Because it was shot on the fully open aperture, we will get a shallow depth of field and it's only focused on a small portion of the picture. So let's stop down the aperture and start with the calibration and check if we need to correct my calibration procedure to new chemistry and a little bit different process. I really like this tape system to hold my stuff on the enlarger. It's not getting messy and it's easy to navigate in darkness and it's not so sloppy as it's just laying on the table. So let's check if chemistry already on the temperature. It should be exactly 35 degrees and let's put on the gloves and start development with a color developer for 45 seconds with the constant rotation in both directions. So because this tank have a cap inside, it start developing only if you rotate it horizontally. So I basically start the timer and rotate the drum to 90 degrees and start rotation at the same time. Before I tried to heat up the drum, but at the moment it's just too much hustle because it's only 45 seconds development and I don't see any deviations and I'm using a little bit more of the solution to keep the temperature steady and it's much easier to handle in a, my small darkroom. So let's wash up the prints and check the colors after drying the print on the wall. I really like the color balance, it's perfect lighting and I really like the sharpness of this picture and always amazed how much more resolution I have on this lens. I bought as experiment my new lab journal with the black pages and let's try to arrange my first prints. Probably it will be a little bit messy, but I want to handle this lab book a little bit as a scrapbook and include it as a small part of my craft. I think it's also important uh, how you make a print and not only final result, but at least the filling out this type of journal with the beautiful pages and tapes and different stuff on top of the page give me much more joy and it's kind of an accomplishment thing. Maybe in future I will make a, you know pages on my website with this journal pages. 
and it's also important if you want to share and explain you know for people how to print in a darkroom and what it actually means but for now let's go for exposure and make a final development so it's development number two and it's exactly the same procedure i'm using exactly the same amount of solution and rotate it for 45 seconds and open it up and we can reveal our final print because I don't make any corrections and I really like the color I want to print this print with the borders what I have on the negative because I really like to crop in camera and this is a bit of advantage how you can you know scan the pictures and develop the pictures and print the pictures itself with the borders for me personally it show more appreciation to the be in the moment and capture and try to crop in the camera exactly how you want to see the picture in the end I really like the multi-layer structure of this picture and the depth of focus renders really well. I don't really like the modern construction of the lenses. They actually too corrected and you don't have this kind of a barrel distortion. So your front elements on the lenses, especially on the modern one, too flat and you don't have this volume and the central point of the lens as you have on my Necton lens which is practically a copy of the old designs and it's just modern optics in terms of coating on the optics and just grinding of the lens and metal constructions. So the next print I want to make the small postcard and unfortunately I don't have any more small paper for postcards so I will improvise and take my bad batch of paper and just will cut it. Probably next good purchase will be roller cutter or just a cutter for the paper. But for now, I just want to recalibrate on top of the picture and adjust with the time because I haven't changed any distance, so it have more exposure. So I close down the aperture and increase the one second of timing. So let's develop it and discuss the difference actually with the calibration, because this calibrator doesn't have any, you know, full spectrum intensity check uh, when you change the magnification it's much better to just use a one cyan channel and keep it in mind like if you change the different magnification you are actually sampling a little bit different portion of the image yes it's kind of a mix but it's not integration sphere you need to keep it in mind your color balance will be a little bit different so just adjust the exposure on the cyan channel and keep the settings the same so the color balance will be the same, but the picture exactly the copy and a small copy of the big picture. As you can see here, it's nicely aligned on the one side and I choose the side which is not with a defect on the paper, so we can cut it later and it will be just perfect small postcard picture on the wall. It's something with these small pictures, I don't know, they're more cute and you like them more. I think it's just because you have more density and if you look on the picture, not from the distance but from hands, it's much more impressive uh, because of like, I don't know, condensing details in one small package. So it's all matters in relation on the viewing distance to the picture itself. So we need to print bigger if you want to look at it from the bigger distance. So let's cut the picture to the framing. I'm using just the old picture as a reference. And here we are, we have a print and I have a small print and big print. And as you can see, it's a little bit different appearance of both of them. So the small one doesn't have a borders from the negative. It's a little bit cropped on the shelf there. But the middle portion, it's exactly the same. And this is calibration portion for the bigger print. And as always, you can find this print on my website. And thank you for watching and see you next time.